Hi everybody, thanks for joining me on No Shelf Control tonight. This is Shannon. I am excited to be talking to you again. Yesterday we talked about the fact that I had reached out to my library on one of their special events and given them three books that I had recently read and really loved and they came back with three recommendations for me. Now they are kind enough to allow me to double dip I also read with my son, as you know, um, and we needed three recommendations as well. So I gave them a list of the books we've been reading together most recently. So these are more um, adult sort of male type of books, uh, more in the sci-fi or fantasy genres. Um, so they took those titles and made a recommendation for what he and I should read next. So as you may know or may have heard on some of my other videos, he's 15 years old and we still read together every night. So it's something that we do just to bond, to have something to talk about and something that I sort of make him do, um, you know, just to humor me. So <laughs> I don't know when we'll stop doing that, but it takes about 15 minutes every night. We sit in the two big recliners and read together and it's just something for us to have as a, as a moment to do something together as he gets older. So... These books are more relevant to that kind of reading, um, but I think that there are some here that you will be very interested in, so I wanted to share them with you. Here's what I told my librarians. I said, my 15-year-old son and I have almost finished Challenger Deep together. Prior to that, we read Artemis and the House in the Cerulean Sea. He's 15, as I said, and we read aloud, so should probably be an adult book or older YA, unless you know of a great middle grade book that skews older. Sexuality, violence, and language don't bother us, but we don't read horror. So the three books I gave them were Challenger Deep, Artemis, and The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I know as adults, some of you have read, certainly Artemis and the House in the Cerulean Sea. And you've heard me talk about Challenger Deep uh, with Neil Schusterman and what an incredible book I think that is. I'll be doing an actual review on that one sometime soon. And I've already done reviews for you on Artemis and the House in the Cerulean Sea. So here are the three books that my librarians proposed. The first one is The Many Half-Lived Lives of Sam Sylvester. And that book is published May 3rd, 2022, by Boyd Mills Press, and it's 352 pages. And it is by Maya McGregor. Here's what we know about the book. In this queer contemporary YA mystery, a non-binary teen with autism realizes they must not only solve a 30-year-old mystery, but also face the demons lurking in their past in order to live a satisfying life. Sam Sylvester's not overly optimistic about their recent move to the small town of Astoria, Oregon, after a traumatic experience in their last home in the rural Midwest. Yet Sam's life seems to be on the upswing after meeting several new friends and a potential love interest in Shep, the pretty neighbor. However, Sam can't seem to let go of what might have been and is drawn to investigate the death of a teenage boy in 1980s Astoria. Sam's convinced he was murdered, especially since Sam's investigation seems to resurrect some ghosts in the town. Threatening notes and figures hidden in shadows begin to disrupt Sam's life, yet Sam continues to search for the truth. When Sam discovers that they may be closer to a killer than previously known, Sam has a difficult decision to make. Would they risk their new life for a half-lived one? So I think that's really interesting. I love the idea that it's queer contemporary YA, that the protagonist is non-binary and has autism. Um, I'll be interested to see how that's portrayed in the story. We don't have um, anyone non-binary in our family, at least in our immediate family that I know of, um, and we don't have autism in our family, but I love reading about people who are different in ways that I haven't experienced. So, um, Neurodivergent, I love, um, love just reading about different kinds of lifestyles and different experiences that people have that I haven't gotten to experience in my life. So it sounds like some of what Sam is going to experience will be positive and some not so much. I'm not surprised that he, that they had a traumatic experience in the rural Midwest, um, considering I live in the Midwest, but really interested to dig into this story with my son and see what it's all about. The next one that they recommended is The Mermaid, The Witch, and The Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. And this one published May 5th, 2020 by Candlewick Press. 
is 360 pages. Here's what we know about this one. A desperate orphan turned pirate and a rebellious imperial daughter find a connection on the high seas in a world divided by colonialism and threaded with magic. Aboard the pirate ship Dove, Flora the girl takes on the identity of Florian the man to earn the respect and protection of the crew. For Flora, former starving urchin, the brutal life of a pirate is about survival. Don't trust, don't stick out, and don't feel. But on this voyage, as the pirates prepare to sell their unsuspecting passengers into slavery, Flora is drawn to the lady Evelyn Hasegawa, who is en route to a dreaded arranged marriage with her own casket in tow. Flora doesn't expect to be taken under Evelyn's wing, and Evelyn doesn't expect to find such a deep bond with the pirate Florian. Soon, the unlikely pair set in motion a wild escape that will free a captured mermaid, coveted for her blood, which causes men to have visions and lose memories, and involve the mysterious Pirate Supreme, an opportunistic witch, and the all-encompassing sea itself. So there you go, a little bit of uh, gender bending going on there, which I'm interested in, as well as some fantasy and a pirate story. So um, we, I don't know that Spencer and I have ever read a pirate story together, um, but we might be interested in this one, we'll have to see. And the last one is actually the one that we picked. We finished Challenger Deep. I read these three synopses to Spencer and he chose this one. It's called In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. And it was published March 2nd, 2021 by Random House. And it's 251 pages. He loves a good space story. So I'm not completely surprised by this, but I had never heard of any of these three books. So I love my librarians for digging out these ideas that I couldn't have come up with on my own. Here we go. In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. June is a brilliant but difficult girl with a gift for mechanical invention who leaves home to begin grueling astronaut training at the National Space Program. Younger by two years than her classmates at Peter Reed, the school on campus named for her uncle, she flourishes in her classes but struggles to make friends and find true intellectual peers. Six years later, she has gained a coveted post as an engineer on a space station and a hard-won sense of belonging, but is haunted by the mystery of Inquiry, a revolutionary spacecraft powered by her beloved late uncle's fuel cells. The spacecraft went missing when June was 12 years old, and while the rest of the world seems to have forgotten the crew, June alone has evidence that makes her believe they are still alive. She seeks out James, her uncle's former protege, also brilliant, also difficult, who has been trying to discover why Inquiry's fuel cells failed. James and June forge an intense intellectual bond that becomes an electric attraction, but the relationship that develops between them as they work to solve the fuel cell's fatal flaw threatens to destroy everything they've worked so hard to create and any chance of bringing the inquiry crew home alive. So that is what we chose. There's a bit of a mystery there. There's again, some neurodivergence. She is exceptionally smart. We have started reading the book. Um, there's a relationship there, which um, Spencer usually tolerates. He's not big on the romance, but I think that this relationship will um, bleed into the story enough that it's going to be a good fit. And, you know, he heard the synopsis and was all about it. So these are the three books that my librarians suggested um, as follow-ups to Challenger Deep, Artemis, and The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Um, so I hope that some of these are interesting to you. If you have read any of those other books, these might be a good fit. Um, if you haven't, check out the other books or check out these. Um, you've got six options there, um, all of which I would highly recommend. So if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. It helps me to know what it is that you're enjoying that I do so I can do more of that. Um, I can't wait to come back. I have a few single book reviews that I want to do. I have the April lists of books that are coming out that I'm excited about, and I have a few surprises. So um, I can't wait to see you later on this week, and we will talk more bookish things then. Thanks!